Of the many multi-dimensional characters that Game of Thrones gives its readers, Robert Baratheon is the one that intrigues me greatly. In fact, I believe we can simplify Robert's character to a man that had a life of two periods, two parts or even two stages. I can't speak for every Game of Thrones fan, but I analyse Robert Baratheon as the Robert before and the Robert after, as his life changed drastically after he became king. Now Mark Addy really portrays him excellently in the latter stages of his life during the show, but there is so much more to Robert's glorious past from the books that we don't get to see in the show. So in this video I'm going to take you through Robert's entire life, from his early years as a fierce warrior to his final days as a shadow of his former self. Welcome to Game of Thrones lore, this is the life of Robert Baratheon. Born in 262 AC, Robert was the firstborn child of Cassana Estermont and Stefan Baratheon, Lord of Storm's End, Lord Paramount of the Stormlands and Head of House Baratheon. He was just over a year older than his brother Stannis, who was born in the year 264 AC. His youngest brother Renly was born when Robert was in his teens. It was quite common for sons of lords and even kings to be fostered into families at a very young age, in order to be properly educated, trained and prepared for manhood. He had been fostered by Lord John Arryn in the Airy, together with Eddard Stark of Winterfell. The two boys became fast friends and John Arryn, who had no children of his own, became like a second father to them. During the period in which he was fostered, Robert visited Storm's End on multiple occasions. Robert has the classical Baratheon look, black hair and blue eyes. His heavy black hair is thick on his chest also. Robert is also a very tall man. Eddard Stark estimates his height to be around six and a half feet. As a young adult, he was a handsome, clean shaven man with rough and hard hands. He was strong and powerful and muscled and was described as a maiden's fantasy. Robert Baratheon was the perfect fitting for a powerful warrior. He loved fighting and sparring and always wanted to better himself in terms of fighting skill. He craved victory. He even enjoyed jousting and competed once against the legendary Sir Barristan Selmy in a tourney at Storm's End, although the knights defeated him. Robert met and fell in love with Lyanna Stark, Eddard's younger sister. In time, after proving his worth to him, Lyanna's father, Lord Rickard Stark of Winterfell, agreed to betroth her to Robert. At the time of their betrothal, Robert already had a bastard daughter, Maya Stone, in the Vale of Arryn, which led to Lyanna commenting that Robert would never keep to one bed, despite his love for her. Eddard would later state also that Robert only saw Lyanna's beauty and never recognised her boldness and strength of will and character. In 281 AC, Robert was present at the tourney at Harrenhal. Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, who won the final joust of the tourney, crowned Lyanna, by then long betrothed to Robert, the Queen of Love and Beauty, instead of his own wife, Princess Elia Martell. There are some who say that Robert had laughed, stating that Rhaegar had only paid Lyanna her due, though according to men who knew Robert better, he felt it had been an insult, on which he brooded long, causing him to harden against Rhaegar. The next year, Lyanna and Rhaegar had disappeared, and it was believed by all, including Robert, Ned and Lyanna's own father Lord Rickard, that Rhaegar had kidnapped her. Lord Rickard and his son Brandon, Lyanna's older brother, rode to King's Landing demanding justice. Both men were executed by order of King Aerys Targaryen II, who demanded the heads of Robert and Eddard afterwards. Robert and Eddard were wards of Lord John Arryn at the Airy. John refused, however, and rose up in rebellion instead, with Eddard, now Lord of Winterfell, following the deaths of his father and older brother, along with Robert rallying the North and the Stormlands respectively. However, some of the North remained loyal to the Iron Throne. When Robert learned that Lords Grandison, Catherine and Fell had all gathered their hosts and planned to join forces at Summerhall in order to march upon Storm's End, Robert rode ahead with his knights. He fought each of the lords in turn, defeating them all. 
Robert returned to Storm's End with his captives and there won the loyalty of Lords Catherine and Grandison, as well as Silveraxe Fell, the son of Lord Fell, whom Robert had just slain. King Ares began to realise that Robert was the greatest threat to the Targaryen dynasty since Daemon Blackfire I and exiled the recently named Hand of the King John Connington, naming Lord Carlton Chelstead as his hand in Connington's stead. To secure the aid of House Tully, John Arryn and Eddard Stark married Lord Hoster's daughters Liza and Catelyn. Robert attended the wedding at Riverrun. Robert led the rebel forces during the Battle of the Trident, the decisive battle near War's End. Around this time, Robert proclaimed his intention to claim the Iron Throne. Out of all the three leaders of the rebellion, Robert had the better claim, due to the fact that his grandmother had been Princess Rael Targaryen, the youngest daughter of King Aegon V. To justify Robert's claim, the Maesters would later use his blood ties to House Targaryen, though it was his conquest that truly won him the throne. In 283 AC, the rebel and loyalist forces fought at a place that became known as the Ruby Ford, located on the northern bank of the Trident. Robert and Prince Rhaegar Targaryen met on horseback in single combat, with the battle raging on all around them. Rhaegar wounded Robert before Robert killed Rhaegar with a striking blow to the chest from his warhammer. When Lord Roos Bolton advised Robert to execute Sir Barristan Selmy, a captured knight of Ares Kingsguard, Robert refused and instead had his own maester treat the wounds of Barristan the Bold, as he was now called. Himself wounded and unable to chase the loyalists, Robert gave the pursuit of the remnants of the Targaryen army to Lord Stark. Leading the van, Eddard followed the loyalists back to King's Landing. However, Lord Simon Lannister had arrived earlier with an army which began attacking the city after Grand Maester Pycelle convinced Ares to omit them within the gates. Ares was slain in the sack of King's Landing by Sir Jaime Lannister, Tywin's son and a member of the King's Guard. After Robert arrived in King's Landing, Tywin presented him with the mutilated bodies of Princess Elia Martell, Rhaegar's wife, along with their two young children, Princess Rhaenys and Prince Aegon. While Robert was pleased they were dead, Ned was outraged and disgusted by the act, calling it murder, saying the young prince and princess were no more than babes. Robert's response was, Ah, I see no babes, only dragon spawn. The argument led to Ned leaving King's Landing the very next day to fight the final battles alone. It took the death of Lyanna and their shared grief to reunite the pair in friendship. Robert was, thereafter, haunted by Lyanna's memory and the desire for further vengeance against the slain Rhaegar. In late 283 AC, Robert Baratheon was crowned king. He chose his second father, Lord John Arryn, as his hand of the king. Pardoning many of his former enemies, Robert appointed Sir Barristan Selmy as Lord Commander of his Kingsguard. Despite Eddard Stark urging Robert to strip Sir Jaime Lannister of his white cloak, Robert listened to John's advice and pardoned Jaime together with the Master of Whispers, Lord Varys, and the Grand Maester Pycelle, and Jaime continued to serve in the Kingsguard along with Barristan. At his coronation feast, Robert joked to Jaime about the fact that Jaime was already being called Kingslayer. He also replaced the skulls of the Targaryen dragons in the Red Keep's throne room with banners and tapestries depicting hunting and battle. Robert tasked his brother Stannis with building a new royal fleet and capturing Dragonstone, the last Targaryen loyalist stronghold, where the pregnant dowager Queen Rhaella Targaryen and her son Viserys remained. Stannis led the assault on Dragonstone some nine months after the Trident Battle, but Viserys and the newly born Daenerys had been smuggled from the island shortly before by Sir Willem Darry. Robert blamed Stannis for letting the children escape even though the two children had been spirited to safety by Targaryen loyalists shortly before Stannis had even set sail. As he now resided in King's Landing, Robert granted the ancestral Baratheon seat of Storm's End to his youngest brother Renly, while naming Stannis as Lord of Dragonstone. 
both Stannis and Queen Cersei Lannister believe that Robert intended this as a slight against Stannis, but according to George R. R. Martin, Robert had not necessarily meant it as such. Dragonstone had traditionally been the seat of the heir to the Iron Throne, the Prince of Dragonstone, during most of the Targaryen dynasty, so the then childless Robert was granting it to his heir at the time, Stannis. Stannis became the head of the House Baratheon of Dragonstone, with Robert heading House Baratheon of King's Landing. Although peace returns to the Seven Kingdoms, many of those who did not support Robert referred to him as the Usurper. Dorne never forgot or forgave that Robert condoned the murders of Princess Elia Martell and her two young children, Princess Rhaenys and Prince Aegon. The year after Robert took the Iron Throne, Elia's younger brother, Prince Oberyn, began plotting a rebellion in the name of the exiled Viserys. Lord John Arryn, Robert's new Hand of the King, travelled to Dorne, sat down with Doran Martell, the Prince of Dorne, and ended all talk of a rebellion. Regardless, Robert never visited Dorne once. Though Robert had no wish to marry after Lyanna Stark's death, the realm needed an heir, and Lord John Arryn suggested that Robert marry Lady Cersei Lannister, the only daughter of Lord Tywin Lannister, to ensure political stability and Tywin's support should Viserys Targaryen ever attempt to win back the Iron Throne. Robert and Cersei were married in 284 AC in the Great Sept of Baelor, with Robert draping her with a heavy golden cloak decorated with an onyx stag. A tourney was held to celebrate the wedding. However, during their wedding night, a drunken Robert accidentally whispered Lyanna into Cersei's ear while consummating the marriage, an act that would set the tone for their relationship. Robert did share a bed with Cersei in the early years of their marriage, something he felt he had to do in order to create an heir. However, it was always when he was extremely drunk, and he actually hurt his wife several times due to his heavy frame. Over time, Robert came to her bed less frequently, not even once a year. Although it was a relief, Cersei began to loathe her husband, and her cold attitude towards him created a distance between them. Robert remained in love with Lyanna for many years after her death, placing further strain upon the marriage. Cersei was involved in an incestuous relationship with her twin brother Jaime for many years, and they continued their illicit relationship after Cersei's marriage to Robert. Although Robert did often urge Cersei to join his hunts in the early years of their marriage, Cersei refused so she could discreetly be with her brother. Cersei gave birth to three children, Prince Joffrey, born in 286 AC, Princess Marcella, born in 289 AC, and then Prince Tommen, born in 290 AC. Though everyone, including Robert, believed them to be Robert's children, Jaime was in fact the biological father of all three. Robert did not attend any of the births either. Whenever Cersei's time was due, he left for a hunt, returning only after the birth. Cersei did in fact become pregnant by Robert only once, however as she had grown to despise him, she refused to give birth to his child. She had Jaime find a woman to cleanse her. Robert did not like his kingship, and this is what I meant at the beginning of the video about Robert being a man of two stages or two halves. He changed by becoming king, and didn't change for the better. He found business concerning coin, crop and justice all tedious. He barely attended small council sessions, preferring to hunt and hawk instead, and when he did attend, he usually dozed right through them. He leaves the task of ruling to the council, mostly to Lord John Arryn, his Hand of the King, and to Lord Stannis Baratheon, his younger brother and the master of ships. Despite the fact that King Aerys Targaryen had left treasure vaults overflowing with gold, Robert's spending has left the crown in debt of over 6 million golden dragons, borrowing heavily from the Lannisters, the Tyrells, the Faith and the Iron Bank of Bravos. His appearance changes drastically also. Once a strong, brute force who loved the song of swords and the feel of battle was now an overweight oaf due to excessive feasting and drinking. In the nine years since Greyjoy's rebellion, the last war over Robert's taking of the Iron Throne, he gained at least eight stone in weight. 
Now he is often red faced from drink with dark circles underneath his eyes and walks as if he is half in his cups while sweating through his silks. Robert's beard, a wild, thick and fierce beard, hides his double chin. This is what I find most saddening about Robert Baratheon's life at this point. He lived a life of glory, fighting in battle, securing the crown. However, the consequence for his kingship meant that the fighting was over. No more wars, rebellions. The realm was at peace. However, Robert Baratheon found his peace in battle. No longer was he Robert Baratheon, the man who fought with a spiked iron warhammer, crafted at Storm's End, while also carrying a blade. Robert Baratheon, who wore a great antlered helmet, which made him look like a horned god. Robert Baratheon, who instilled fear in his opponents, standing close to six foot six and inspired loyalty in those who followed him. Those days were gone. Robert craved the old days and instead overate, overdrank and became a shell of the man he once was. And what's worse is, the woman he did it all for was dead. Despite his outward appearance of enjoying women, drinking, tourneys and spending money, inside I believe Robert felt hollow. Although he stated to Ned Stark that he wished to give up his crown and travel to the free cities as a sellsword. It was, I believe, down to him simply missing battle. Robert's story for the reader begins in the first novel. When his hand of the king, Lord John Arryn, dies suddenly, Robert decides to offer the position to his old childhood friend, Eddard Ned Stark, Lord of Winterfell. Displeased that he was not chosen, Stannis Baratheon, Robert's younger brother, sails from King's Landing to his own seat of Dragonstone. Travelling with a large retinue to the north, Robert insists upon paying his respects at the tomb of Lyanna Stark within the crypt of Winterfell. The king offers a betrothal between his own son Prince Joffrey and Eddard's eldest daughter Sansa. Eddard is shocked how much Robert has changed since he last saw him at the end of Greyjoy's rebellion. Ned reluctantly accepts the position of Hand of the King and while Robert and Eddard are away hunting, Bran Stark discovers Queen Cersei Lannister and her twin, Jaime Lannister of Robert's Kingsguard, in the First Keep. Jaime throws Bran from the tower, leaving the boy crippled and comatose. While riding through the Barrowlands, Robert discusses the marriage of the exiled Princess Daenerys Targaryen to Drogo, a Khal of the Dothraki, and the king is uncertain about Ned's opinion that the marriage does not represent a danger. At Castle Dari, after Joffrey has been attacked by Arya Stark's direwolf Nymeria, Robert is willing to call the incident simply an argument between two children. As the direwolf has disappeared, the beast cannot be executed. However, when Cersei suggests Sansa's direwolf, Lady, be executed instead, Robert does nothing to stop it, despite loathing the suggestion. Robert does not wish to face Eddard and spends the remaining fortnight of the journey drunk in Cersei's wheelhouse. Renly Baratheon, Lord of Storm's End and Robert's youngest brother, plots with House Tyrell to have Robert replace Cersei as Queen with Marjorie Tyrell, daughter of Mace Tyrell, Lord of Highgarden. Sir Loras Tyrell hopes his sister would remind Robert of the love of his youth, Lyanna. Against Ned's wishes, Robert decides to host a tourney for his friend's appointment as Hand of the King. The king plans to fight in the melee portion of the Hand's tourney, loudly shouting at Cersei when she openly attempts to forbid him. Eddard and Sir Barristan Selmy convince him that the fight would be unfair as every contestant would let their king win, which angers Robert as it touches on his pride. He eventually does not participate in the melee. Lord Varys later tells Eddard that Cersei had planned to have Robert killed during the tournament. When Robert calls a meeting to demand the assassination of Daenerys, who was now pregnant with Khal Drogo's child, Eddard resigns in protest. After Eddard is injured in an ambush led by Jaime Lannister, Robert visits his friend and gives him back his badge of office, stating that if Eddard refuses to take it, Robert will pin it on Jaime himself. Accompanied by Renly Baratheon, Barris and Selmy, Joffrey, Sandor Clegane and Sir Balon Swan, Lord Yon Royce and the other nobles, Robert goes hunting in the Kingswood for a white heart. Eddard holds court and meets with Raymond Darry, Mark Piper and Carl Vance, knights from the Riverlands. 
In Robert's name, Ned sends Lord Beric Dondarrion to apprehend Sir Gregor Kilclane, who was accused of brigandry. Having investigated Robert's bastards and discovered Gendry and Barra, Eddard comes to the realization that Robert's royal children are actually Cersei's bastards born of incest with her brother Jaime. Knowing that Robert will kill Cersei and the children in his wrath, Eddard advises her to flee, but she refuses. Cersei had given Robert's squire, Lancel Lannister, a fortified strong wine, three times as potent as normal, to give to Robert during his hunt. Robert drunkenly insists on facing a monstrous boar alone, but the king is mortally wounded in the process. He is brought back to King's Landing, where he has Ned Stark write in his will. Robert names him Lord Regent and Protector of the Realm, to serve until Joffrey comes of age. Eddard, unable to tell Robert about Cersei's infidelity, changes the wording in Robert's will, replacing my son Joffrey with my heir. Robert then dies the next day. According to Varys, if it had not been the boar which killed Robert, it would have been a fall from a horse or an arrow gone astray, as Cersei needed Robert to die during the hunt. The bells of the great sept of Baelor toll in the city to announce the king's death. After Cersei tears up Robert's will in the throne room, Ned announces that Joffrey has no claim to the Iron Throne, and that Stannis is the true heir as Robert's younger brother. However, Lord Stark is betrayed by Lord Peter Baelish and the gold cloaks of Janos Slint. When King Joffrey wishes to punish someone for his father's death, Varys suggests that Barristan, the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, be blamed. Joffrey forces Barristan into retirement, replacing him with Jaime Lannister as Lord Commander and allowing Sandor to be added to the King's Guard. Robert's death caused all-out mayhem and in so started the War of the Five Kings. Whether the rumours of Joffrey being illegitimate were true or false, it was enough to spark a war. Renly Baratheon was crowned king with the support of House Tyrell. Stannis Baratheon calls himself the one true king and claims the Iron Throne also. Rob Stark was crowned king in the north by the Northmen and the Rivermen and wants to succeed from the rule of the Iron Throne. And Balon Greyjoy declares independence also, naming himself king of the Isles and the North. Although Robert Baratheon died from the result of a hunting accident, his quick acceptance of death, in addition to his drastic change after becoming king, indicates to me that he stopped enjoying life a very long time ago. I believe he felt his purpose was to achieve victory on the battlefield and become the greatest warrior he could be. The unfortunate thing for Robert was, when the fighting ended, he struggled to move on from his past glories and the woman he was meant to move forward with, Lyanna, was dead. He died an overweight drunk, substituting his disappointment of being king for a life spent holding on to memories. Thank you so much for watching, I truly, truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever. So please, if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at PotterFolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.